You are watching The Wellness Hour. This is our business report. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, technology in the modern dental practice. With us, we have an expert on the topic. He's uh, known as the digital dentist. He is the CEO of the digital dentist, uh, Dr. Lauren Levine. Dr. Levine, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy, and please call me Lauren. Okay, so Lauren, but people call you the digital dentist, you say. I've been known as the digital dentist for quite some time. Is that right? Yeah. In fact, you were telling me in the green room, I, I, you said, you know, that's what I'm known for. Everyone's known me as a digital dentist for over 10 years, so. Now, I've wanted you on the show for quite some time, and anticipating this interview, by the way, uh, I've asked around, and it seems like every single dentist that I've talked to knows who you are. Good. So uh, I guess you've built quite a reputation. But for people that don't know you and what you do as the digital dentist, who's a typical client, and what are the different... Uh, services you offer? Well, I'm not sure if we really have a typical client. We okay. have different categories of clients that I would say are, are very common for my business. The first would be the uh, dentist who is fresh out of school that really wants to make the proper decisions, wants to um, make sure they don't make a very expensive mistake. As far as, and we're talking about technology. Right, about all going, the systems in their practice. All the technology systems going chartless, going paperless. They want to do it right from the get-go. So that would be our first category of client. A uh, second would be the older dentist who really has avoided technology as long as they possibly can, but now they're saying, you know, I want to bring in an associate, I want to bring in a partner, I need to get my practice modern for it to be attractive to. Is there a lot people. of that going on, by the way? You people would, resisting technology? The guy that's on his way out wants to retire? Yeah, you would think that maybe they don't want to make the investment, but they realize that if they want to be attractive to a potential partner or associate, they have to have the technology in place. Otherwise, that person coming in is going to have to make that investment on their own. Okay, and the other categories? The other categories would be the dentist who is probably on some type of monthly support contract. They may not even be aware of what they're paying every month until the end of the year, and they look at uh, their account and say, oh my God, where did all this money go? And maybe they're on some type of auto payment and just not really getting good value for that. The final category would be the, the dentist who is just tired of being nickeled and dimed that every time a computer goes down, every time a printer's not working properly, they've got to call the IT company up, send someone over, spend hundreds of dollars, uh, and it just adds up. Those is, that a, is that a common problem? More so than Today? we'd like it really? to be. Yeah, I mean, yes. you're in the business, so you hear it every day. Yeah, we okay. see these problems every single day. The, the question is, are there things that can be done ahead of time so that you don't have to deal with these problems on a regular basis? Now, I've looked at your marketing material, The Digital Dentist, and, and we've talked on the phone. And uh, we were also in the green room talking about this. I said, it reminded me of Geico because, and I don't wanna put words in your mouth here, they say, give us 15 minutes, save 15%. I said, if they gave nationwide, because this is a big business, right? For dentists, Absolutely. targeted dentists. If you, t you are pretty much less expensive and offer more services than the big guys. Is that true? Well. I don't want to criticize I mean, other companies. Yes, it true? yes, okay. I believe it is. Uh, we uh, feel that we have the largest number of products and services, a uh, suite of, of services that we can offer to, to our clients, and we do it at a significantly lower cost than I'm seeing out there. Okay, and, and uh, with the same level of service? Oh, better level of service. Uh, we have full-time technicians who work exclusively with dental practices. I practiced for 10 years as a periodontist. We understand the needs of a dental office more than I think any other IT company in the world. Because you're a dentist. I practiced for 10 years. Who is your competition, by the way? Well, our, our so-called competition okay. would be na national companies that service like? dentists like Shine, Patterson, CareStream, multi-billion dollar companies who would have an IT department that they would work with uh, in order to provide these types of services. To so you practices. offer everything that they offer and then some? Oh, and, and definitely then some. We, I get to at see- At a less expensive price? Oh, at a significantly lower cost. Okay, good, good. Now, if it's as good as you say it is, logically, right, why doesn't everybody do it? Why does everybody switch over to what you're doing? And that's, a, I guess, a tough one to answer. But Well, that was one of my goals for being here, is that people just don't know what's out there. They put together their offices, they have technology systems that are running their practices, and they sort of go on autopilot. They're not really aware of the potential problems that are lurking around the corner. And of course, now we have all these government, governmental regulations with HIPAA and high tech that people, you know, it's almost like ignorance is bliss. But unfortunately, when the problems do occur, it becomes a very expensive undertaking for most practices. Now, now your background and training. I mean, you were a dentist, a periodontist. 
uh, big technology company. You come from a family of one of the largest technology companies in Canada. Correct. So you've always been a techie guy, kind of a... Love technology. I grew up with this. I worked at our family's business. I've always loved technology. And then dentistry. How'd you get in involved in dentistry? And how'd you switch into what you're doing now? I was actually thinking medicine for a long time. And my sister met and married an endodontist. And I spent, some, spent a summer working for him. And I liked it. And I said, you know, I, I like doing this dentistry. So I think uh, dentistry would be a great career choice for me. OK. I never in a million years thought I could somehow find a way to marry my love of technology with dentistry. Uh, but it just worked out really well for me in the long run. So briefly, how did you end up doing this? When technology started coming into dentistry in the late 90s, I had a knack for putting stuff together. Okay. Back then, there was no Shine or Patterson or CareStream large companies that were doing this. It was just individual people. And they were all systems that did not work properly together. And it's just something that I had a knack for doing. And I decided that I wanted to do that as a part-time career on top of dentistry, that I could consult with offices, help them with their technology decisions, but at the same time still practice, because I never thought it would be a full-time career So you were me. a periodontist in Vermont? That's correct. And I had a lot of dentists that I worked with that knew that I was into technology, and all the dentists I worked with were starting to add this to their own practices. So they were calling you and say, hey, Lauren, can you help me sure, out Sure, as a favor. You know, they didn't know what they were doing, right? and I had a knack for it, so I said, sure, I'm happy to help you out. And all of a sudden, I was getting calls from offices that did not refer patients to me, and I thought, well, maybe I should start charging for this time. I, I'm taking time away from my patients and evenings and weekends to help my colleagues out. So it started to become a, a part-time business, and it started getting so busy that I said, you know, I really need to make a decision. Around that time is when California passed licensure by credential, that as a dentist in Vermont, I could go to California and practice there as well if I wanted to. Okay. I knew I wanted to do the consulting part-time. There weren't a lot of dentists in Vermont, so I made the decision to sell my practice in Vermont, move to California. I had gone to school here in college. I had friends and family out here. Where'd you go to school? Uh, USC. Okay. And the goal was to practice three or four days a week and do my consulting a day or two a week and you know, maybe in five, 10 years, transition away from the practice or at least change that, that ratio. What I did not know is that there were no licenses to be had for the first year that I got here. So all of a sudden, I'm living in Southern California. That means you couldn't get a, a California dental license. That's correct. I could not practice for uh, up to a year after I moved Interesting. here. Interesting. Okay. So that was a great so motivating factor. So kind of forced factor. you into this business. Oh, yeah. When you're living in Southern California with no income, it's a very good motivating factor to say, I got to be doing something else. So what I thought was going to be a part-time career became a full-time career, and it just took off. So back in the early days, by the way, before you became the digital dentist, that brand, were you mostly you know, setting up their computers, their networking, their, their data backup? I mean, what were you doing in the early days compared to what you're doing now? It was core IT services. Okay. I was working with offices who wanted my advice on what technology to add, when to add it. I never really intended to, to install the computers and the networks, but a lot of the offices I worked with said, hey, you know this stuff so well, can you get us a discount on this and install it for us and support us? And I said, fine. So the core of what I did for the first number of years was networks, computers, digital x-rays, installing it, and, and providing ongoing support after the fact. And to this day, so fast forwarding to today, you have clients uh, all over the country, some out of the country? Uh, we have a number of clients in Canada as well. Okay. And what are the services you offer? There are a bunch of different services that we offer. Um, we've really changed our focus over the last number of years. We used to be, as I said, mostly focused on hardware and IT. What we have found is really lacking for most dental offices are services. Okay. And the four services that we really localized on, number one would be data backup, uh, disaster recovery, monitoring the networks in real time, and HIPAA and high tech regulations and compliance with those regulations. So you're a HIPAA expert. I think I, you told me that on the yeah, telephone. Yeah, I've got a pretty good handle on, Does on HIPAA. Does that separate you? I mean, these other guys, are, they real, are, are there a lot of consultants out there for HIPAA? I'm not aware of any, especially none Is that, that are right? doing. There are people who do HIPAA consulting. I'm not aware of any technology companies that offer HIPAA services to their clients. So your technology is HIPAA compliant, or you make sure that it is? We certainly give them all the tools. In case of an audit, et cetera? We, yeah, there's, it's almost impossible for a dental office to be completely HIPAA compliant. There are hundreds of pages of regulations. But in talking with our clients who have been audited, in talking with other dentists, uh, in talking with HIPAA auditors, we've been able to identify the key 
areas that dentists really can and should do in order to get to be in compliance with the HIPAA regulations. So I'm going to have a lot of questions, by the way, about HIPAA check, NetWatch, and Data Protect, is what you call it? Correct. Okay. Uh, but, but what do you want people to know about your company? I want them to know that they're going to be in very good hands with us, that as a former practicing dentist, I understand their needs. We work exclusively with dental practices. I've worked with over 2,000 practices in the last 15 years. We understand the technology, and we have what I consider to be the most comprehensive suite of services at a very competitive price. Okay, but some of these reps, and, and I want to uh, ask you this question because you say that the fact that you were a dentist, but if somebody's been in the business for 30 years, repping for different companies and working for one of your competitors. What advantage do you have? I mean, don't they understand the, the needs of a dentist? Not necessarily. They may not be up on all the latest technology on all the HIPAA and high-tech regulations. Okay. But the challenge that they would face is that they are only able to recommend and sell the systems that their company tells them that they can. I don't okay. have those limitations. We've been able to develop our systems from the ground up, and these are designed specifically for dental practices. We have multiple options. We're not tied into any one product line. So for example, a Shiner, and I know you respect those companies. Absolutely. Those are all respectable companies, but their reps may have to sell a certain product. They can only don't. sell. They can only sell what okay. their company allows them to sell. I don't have that limitation at all. And their training probably only lends to what they sell. Yeah, and the problem is they may not be aware that there's some really great new systems out there that are significantly less costly than other older systems that are around. Okay, so you, you, so you aren't tied into one particular... We're line. not married to any system at all. We can work with our client individually, figure out what's important for them, what they're looking for, and tailor the solution to their needs. Is it a bit, so, so in a way, you're also a consultant? Absolutely. So you'll help them even if they're going to pick software? Or oh, pick sure. Hardware or whatever. Of course. I, these are my colleagues. I'm really right. concerned that they make intelligent decisions, that they don't make expensive mistakes. If I can help them in that process, that was a good day for me. So I, it's not critical that they work with us. Well, yes, we offer a lot of great services that we think that they can benefit from at a good price. But at the end of the day, if I've helped them with their decision making process, then it was worthwhile. Now, I asked you some personal questions in our uh, green room over there knowing that I was going to probably bring them up here, but, but, I, but I said, you really like this better than dentistry? I love this. I wake really? up every morning Is and I am right? so excited. Do you like just the technology part? Or, I mean, well, what yeah, it? I mean, I grew up with the technology. I love technology, but that's not really it. What, the thing that I love the most about this is that I get to help out my colleagues every single day. When we're talking about technology, there's some very expensive systems out there. When you make a mistake, it's a very expensive mistake and very difficult to recover from that. I help them avoid those mistakes. That was, that's a great day for me when I can help a client. You know, one of the things uh, you know, at, uh, at the green room, and, and, and I've got a lot, a lot of questions, I want to get into HIPAA check, net watch, and your data protect, but uh, you said the new person, this young dentist, is a lot of fun for you. Absolutely. Elaborate on that. Well, I love working with new dentists. They're coming out of school and they have a lot of debt. They really have never had any business training. They don't know how to start a practice and what they need to be doing. There are so many decisions that they have to make when it comes to technology and they can't afford an expensive mistake. I can help guide them through that maze, make sure they're making intelligent decisions, cost effective solutions for their practice, and they can worry about other things such as bringing in new patients and running the practice versus all these technology decisions. Are there certain cases where you are almost 50% less? Does that ever happen? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it does. We're, we're definitely less. Oh, I've, I've seen, we have some clients that are paying well over $2,000 a month for IT services, and it doesn't even include the number of services that we offer our clients. I think that's just... Do you get frustrated, by the way? I do. I think a lot of dentists, unfortunately, just don't know that they have options or out They don't there. believe it or something? Because I know you're all over dental town. I'm, I'm afraid very... to go on dental town, I told you. <laughs> well, that they're going to attack me, but I don't think that would be the case. <laughs> but 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 you I mean, look, you were a moderator for dental town. A lot of people know who you are. Is it because they're I mean, look, we all we're set in our ways in a lot of ways, right? They're already using a company. They're okay with it. They're just you think they're just there's a bit of complacency? Cuz yeah. my question was, are you do you get frustrated about this? If yeah. you're offering a better service according to you at a less expensive price with better service, 
it seems, you know, in, in a way, a no-brainer. I do get a little frustrated because I think a lot of dentists worked with their sales reps for years. They know the oh, rep. Good point. They know the kids. Their, their kids play baseball together. It's built on relationships. But a lot of time, it may not be really in their best interest because they're overpaying or they're paying way too much for a, a, a set of services, and they're not getting all the things they really need.